Joshua Gen 2005 Presence Yet Another Bible Study. Today's topic is genes. All scripture quotations are from the King James Bible of 1611 AD the authorized version. The greatest testimony we have today is recorded in the book of 1 John chapter 5 and verse, 11. And this is the record, that God hath given to us eternal life, and this life is in his Son. 12. He that hath the Son hath life, and he that hath not the Son of God hath not life. With regards to the above two verses, these two verses are called the assurance of salvation. Simply it means if you have Jesus Christ, in your life, you have eternal life and if you don't have the Son of God, you don't have eternal life. It does not matter whether you live a clean life or not but whether you have the Son or not. To understand this testimony, first, we have to go back to the beginning. God created Adam and Eve with everlasting genes. We all have 23 by 2 chromosomes in every cell of our body. It is a very unique language as it affects the human body and the composition of the human body is such that all humans have this. If we say a human cell is a seed, this seed has a couple of 23 chromosomes. Some trillions of such seeds in the human body will determine the health, talent, awareness of God, likes and dislikes, proper predetermined functions of the body of anything that is living. God wrote this genetic code into the human body the Word of God says. The Book of Psalms, Chapter 139 and from Verse 15. My substance was not hid from thee, when I was made in secret, and curiously wrought in the lowest parts of the earth. 16. Thine eyes did see my substance, yet being unperfect, and in thy book all my members were written, which in continuance were fashion, when as yet there was none of them. King David knew this. Our genetic code in our bodies was written by God when there was nothing, God says. The God-written genetic code also have a few characteristics we pose as unique individual in this world. I like to name a few here. 1. Our resemblance or personal looks. 2. The absence of genes that are needed for eternal life. 3. Likes and dislikes. 4. How we will react. 5. How our emotions work in us. 6. God's plan for our lives only could be activated through Jesus Christ. 7. The talents we have. 8. Level of understanding. 9. Level of wisdom. 10. Level of love we have. Once we start believing in Christ Jesus, what God planned genes he wrote in his book at our inception will start to simulate and our genes will start responding to God's word. So Adam and Eve were made with elements of genes that will make them live forever. Can a fruit of a tree, could destroy these particular genes of a human? Yes. Let's go to the beginning, the book of Genesis, chapter 3 and from verse 1 Now the serpent was more subtil than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, Yea, hath God said, Ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden? 2 And the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden. 3 But of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God hath said, Ye shall not eat of it, neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die. 4 And the serpent said unto the woman, Ye shall not surely die. 5 For God doth know that in the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened, and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. You count and see, Satan spoke only 46 words to plant a seed in Eve's mind. Satan spoke exactly 46 words to Eve which could be considered as a seed. This is inserting a gene that will destroy the everlasting part of the genes with the action followed. This seed entered Eve's mind first and then the action by this thought which made Adam and Eve eat the fruit of the tree of knowledge of good and evil destroyed those genes of immortality. At the same time, gene attacking genes were embedded into us so that we will die physically someday. As the offspring of Adam and Eve did not carry the genes of immortality anymore God had to find another way for man to live forever as his original plan was, man to lead an everlasting life. On the other hand, the tree of life, the fruit, enhanced the genes of immortality. And when Adam and Eve disobeyed God forbade the tree of life to them as the human body did not carry the genes of immortality anymore. This is why Jesus said in Scripture. Gospel of John, Chapter 15 and Verse 5. I am the vine, ye are the branches, he that abideth in me, and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit, for without me ye can do nothing. Today if you believe in Christ, that is also spiritual. Do you see? that Jesus is the tree of life now? Just as Satan did to Adam and Eve, the seed entered them through thought which could also be called spiritual. Believing in Christ is also done in the spiritual. 
however as the offspring did not carry the genes of immortality in them, all humans will die today to be resurrected by Christ the day he comes in the clouds. The scientists say that by 2045 they will create the first immortal being and man will be immortal. Can this be? Never for two reasons. 1. The present age would not go that far. 2. Genes of immortality cannot be created as they cannot be recreated and that is why God gave Jesus to us. We live, we die but only Jesus will resurrect us. Today man does not carry the genes of immortality but God's original plan was that man will live forever. God sent his son to the world, he died on the cross, rose again on the third day. For a man to understand that immortality is still available we need to study biblical genetics. God will fulfill his plan somehow so that his most valuable creation will live an everlasting life. What happens when we believe in Jesus Christ and invite him into our hearts? Book of Revelation, Chapter 3 and Verse 20. Behold, I stand at the door, and knock, if any man hear my voice, and open the door, I will come into him, and will sup with him, and he with me. What kind of food is he going to sup with us? It is the Word of God. Eating the Word of God will start the process of creating and nourishing the genes of immortality. Today everlasting life does not happen in the physical world but first in the spiritual realm. Just as Jesus Christ died, He came back to life. The words of God had the nourishing elements for everlasting life. Today physically we die but as we have the genes of immortality embedded into our lives with the Word of God. Those genes don't die but bring back us to life the day God calls us to be alive once again with the sound of His voice and the trumpet of God. This is the very reason Jesus said in the Gospel of John, chapter 11 and verse 25. Jesus said unto her, I am the resurrection, and the life, he that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. Also, the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 4 and verse 3. But he answered and said, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. Here we see that for physical living we need food but to live forever, we need the Word of God. Book of Jeremiah, Chapter 15 and Verse 16. Thy words were found, and I did eat them, and thy word was unto me the joy and rejoicing of mine heart, for I am called by thy name, O Lord God of hosts. We see that Jeremiah had enough spiritual food so that he may add God's name before his name. What is God's name? God or Jesus has many names and what will be in front of our names on the day when we eat his word? Book of Isaiah, chapter 9 and verse 6. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. In this passage, Jesus is being called Everlasting Father. What Jeremiah wants us to know is, once we enter the paths of God, we could add the everlasting word in front of our names. For Adam and Eve to live forever God said to obey and eat from the tree of life. Today for us to live forever God says to believe in Jesus, eat the word daily, study the word often, obey his word willingly, die physically just as Jesus died, as the word of God nourishes the genes of immortality you will come back to life. Today most Christians do not understand the word of God properly. They go to church on Sunday, do their praise and worship, listen to the sermon but never grow in the Lord. Sometimes they are sleeping while the word is being preached as their spirit is still in a dead status. Today I would like to challenge you to read the word, to study the word, and to eat the word so that the genes of immortality will be regenerated and enhanced in you. The Gospel of John, Chapter 5 and Verse 25. Verily, verily, I say unto you, the hour is coming, and now is, when the dead shall hear the voice of the Son of God and they that hear shall live. Do you notice what Jesus says here? Only the dead who hear the voice of the Son of Man will live. Why? Immortal genes are there in them. Hope this small study taught you something today. May God bless you. Thank you for watching, reading and listening to our stories. Encourage us more to bring super stories. Subscribe to our channel and push the bell icon so you may know when we upload our next story instantly.